name is Sinead Jones and I'm your resident certified sex coach. Thank you for watching Do You Know the New Kinky You? This is a platform where I, as your resident certified sex coach, will talk about all things sex and sexuality from a sex positive place. If this is your first video, congratulations. I encourage you to go back to watch the others. They are delightful. Um, this particular iteration is a weekly summary of my podcast, which I do. It's on a few different platforms, but I record on Anchor and it's also on Spotify. So if you don't have a, already subscribed to my channel there, please, please go back and check it out so that you can get the details for what it is that I'm about to walk you through. So first of all, on this particular slide, because I'm not probably going to repeat it at the end because it's already right here. If you want to follow me on social media, all of the handles are there. That is the website as well as the email address. If you wanted to send me any type of correspondence, you know, feel free to drop a note. We are talking about the book Mirror of Intimacy, Daily Reflections on Emotional and Erotic Intelligence. So, and the book was authored by Alexandra Katakis and Tom Bliss. This is the ASEC 2015 Book of the Year, and ASEC stands for American Association of Sexuality Educators, Counselors, and Therapists. So, I'm going to drop this note probably several times, but I am a resident. I am your resident, but I am a certified sex coach, but I will soon be a certified sex educator. So we have some continued work to do and continued successes. So I am very, very excited about that. But we are going to go through our weekly summary. So the way that the book works as a daily reflection, the authors will give us a topic for that particular day, a reflection. And so I will read that particular topic. Uh, the audience will listen to it. You soon, if you haven't already, will listen to it and gather your thoughts about what the authors had to say. Then I will provide you some feedback based off of what it is that I took away from that particular day's topic. And then again, you can come back and see how it resonated with you. It may, it may not. You might agree wholeheartedly, completely, not at all. And this is the platform where I hope that when you get to listen to the daily podcast, that you come back to these weekly summaries and provide your commentary on what it is that you took away from it, good, bad, or indifferent. So let's go through it quickly. I tend to elaborate just as much here as I do on the daily. So this is intended to be a summary. So I'm not going to cheat you out of the chance to hear all of the nuances that are part of my brain. So this is purely, purely, purely just a summary. And I'm saying it more for myself than I am for you. So on the 24th of January, we talked about loneliness and there is, you know, a major difference between being alone, you know, meaning that you have affinity for your solitude and being lonely. You know, like even when you're around other people, you can still feel lonely if you're not connected uh, and leading to creating those sincere connections because, you know, a lot of people put out, you know, I've talked about it before, put out your representative, you're not being true to your, being your true self. So you're not really able to give somebody else your true self. So there's a bit of disconnect. So you're not necessarily, and this is not you, you, this is you who is being able to relate to this particular topic right now. So just as a quick caveat, sometimes these things will relate, sometimes they don't. So first of all, like loneliness did not relate to me because I'm not lonely. So I had to put myself in a place of loneliness to be able to understand, you know, maybe where the authors were coming from or where somebody who did resonate from that area would, you know, connect. Uh, so that I'm saying this now so that you get it for the rest of the day's topics. You know, you I think it's really based on where you're coming from. And so when you're lonely or feeling alone, you know, reach out, you know, if there's, especially in the world we live in today, in the pandemic, you know, we're not as close to people as we used to be. We're not, we don't see the same people that we used to see every day. We don't get to hug and kiss and do all of those things that we used to do. 
you know, in the same way. I mean, of course, things have gotten much better and we're able to commune, uh, which was a word from uh, before. And we're able to do that a little bit more often, but, you know, I, it's still not to the same level as it was before uh, March of 2020, at least, you know, not for me. So when you come from that, you need to also be able to manage expectations, understand who it is that you're dealing with, you know, perhaps uh, reservations that they might have about, you know, how they're feeling in life. But when, oh, I'm sorry, when you're thinking about somebody, reach out to them. So those connections need to be made. But again, manage expectations because, you know, you never know where people are. So don't put pressure or burden other people to relinquish your loneliness. There are things that you can do to be proactive about you and your state of mind as far as being alone and being lonely. Uh, you are the master of that key. So grooming, I talked about this a bit, um, again, related to the pandemic, there were, you know, there's time where, you know, we let ourselves go a little bit. Some of us did, some of us did really well uh, during the pandemic and you still got dressed. I mean, it was the reason why if, if you watch the YouTube videos, you know, a year ago, I literally stopped posting almost for a year because it was just so much effort to do this, you know, to, to be cute and, you know, try to do all of that. It, it was just a lot. So, you know, this takes work and sometimes you don't feel like it. And, you know, I get it, but there are times you got to get up off your ass and wash your ass. People wash your ass, please. You know, there are things where you have to deal with your personal level of comfort, but when you're about to be out in the world, please do us all a favor. Wash your ass, brush your teeth, just groom. All right, courtship. Now, this was a tricky one for me because, you know, I, I don't consider myself old, but I know I'm not the young whippersnapper I used to be. So I'm caught somewhere in that middle uh, age. And not that there was a lot of old school courting, you know, when I was young, but I'm, I was young enough to remember, you know, what it looked like to see a, a guy ask a girl on a date or, you know, people flirt or, you know, you know, book somebody, you know, you squinting and winking and you go into the club getting numbers and then, you know, you had to figure out how long to take before you called them and you called them and you wanted to go on a date. And you, this was before texting. You actually had to call people and talk to them. You know, it was it was a time long, long ago. And even in my day, that to me doesn't even exist anymore. Everything is just so instantaneous, instant gratification. You know, what we're looking for when we meet somebody is how fuckable are they? And so you're not necessarily, and this has probably always been the case, but, you know, to some degree, but at the same time, it's never been as overt as it is today. And there's nothing wrong with that. Get your freak on, get your you know, slut on, get your whore on, get with it. You want to do that. If that is your sexual expression and you feel comfortable and you are protecting yourself in ways that you feel is necessary, go for it. But there are things that happen that in a fuck relationship that don't happen when you're courting somebody romantically. And so just keep those things in mind, you know, and in the, the podcast, I reference, you know, a commercial that is currently out where it's just showing the dynamic of different relationship structures as it is, you know, today and where, you know, our young, young people are seeing that it's not just you know, husband, wife, mommy, daddy, that relationship structures are completely different and they are continually evolving. So even back in the day during courtship, it was expected that the man pick a girl up, you know, perhaps knock on the door, introduce himself to the parents or, you know, to whoever, you know, she either could have a chaperone or something like that. And then they go out on their date. It's very friendly. No, maybe a pack. He usually pays for dinner. He pays for dinner. And usually, I mean, like he might have gotten money from his parents to pay for dinner. But there was there was that. That don't happen no more. Sorry. All right. Let's see. Tolerance. On the 27th. This was a good one. Um, 
what does it mean to tolerate a person or a situation? I think, you know, tolerance is something that we have. You know, it's something that is inside of us. It can be inside of us. It's just a matter to the degree in which we actively try to manage it. You know, so there could be a situation where I don't feel like being bothered and I am there under severe duress, but I know that I have to be there. So just don't be an asshole about it, basically. So if you're somewhere or doing something that is not your favorite activity, but you know you have to be there, suck it up and just do it, basically. I know that there's a bullet that I'm hiding, but I can't see it. So I'm going to go ahead and get past it. And you can go and find out when you listen to the 27th, where we're talking about intolerance, or tolerance. I'm not saying intolerance, tolerance. Uh, okay, so the 30th, I'm going to skip ahead for a second. The 30th was on a Sunday. The 31st was on a Monday. So this is not just a weekly summary. This is the end of the month summary. So yay for January. Okay, so we're talking about circumstance. Now here is where I talked about where some things are just out of our control. There are certain things. Oh, and because let's give some uh, social reference because I don't do this often. So I'm very proud of myself. Um, it was recently announced, I think within the last day or so, that Rihanna and ASAP Rocky were pregnant and they were going to have a baby. And I was like, yay, great. You know, every child is a blessing, right? But then I got to thinking that that child has no control over the circumstance that they are being born. Just like, you know, little Susie on the corner there, if she gets pregnant, her child has no circumstance under which they have control over when they're, how they're brought into this world. So, you know, certain things about us are inherent. We just can't control the circumstances around those. White people can't control being white. Black people can't control being black. You know, there are just certain things that we can't control. There are things that we can control. There are certain things that we can do to change our circumstances, you know, but change comes with work, change comes with effort. Just like, you know, I could have decided to say, stay stuck, you know, and be, you know, complacent and just do nothing. But, you know, I had to change my circumstance, which is why I'm here with you today. Very excited, very happy, because I had to change my mindset. I had, to, I, I don't just, you know, talk the talk. I have to live it. I have to work it. So I had to change my circumstance. So I had to get tired. Of, I had to stop being tired of the effort that it took to be what I thought is presentable to be on camera and share this stuff with you. So you know what? Take ownership of your shit. That is what I did. And that's what I'm challenging you to do. Take ownership of your shit. If I want to be a successful sex coach, if I want you to trust me with what it is that I am telling you and how it is that I feel like I can help you, why would you trust me if I'm not willing to put in that work? So I have to do that. I have to take ownership of my shit, which is why we are here. So the 29th, we talked about meaning. With meaning, the book, the authors ask big questions like, why are we here? You know, why are we here? Why do we exist? How do we exist? You know, are we more than just our personalities? You know, what, what is all of this? You know, so they went on to talk about manifested thoughts. And I am going to go ahead and just put it out there. If you've heard me before, you know that I am a big proponent of the universe. I'm not a very, I don't practice a specific religion, but I am a very spiritual person. And I believe in the powers of the universe, of us being interconnected beings, of us being all energy. And I will tell you that manifested thoughts, where, we're, where I'm sitting, where you're watching me sit, is manifest destiny. Think about something in your life where you wanted it so bad and it was your thought day in, day out. It was everything. It was in your head over time, over process, over opportunity, over what you might have thought was chance. Things came together and 
the thing that was in your head is now in your hand. And that's what manifested thoughts are. Everything that this pen didn't exist at one point. This mouse didn't exist at one point. Somebody had to take it out of his head and poop it out into an actual physical idea. But things start with thoughts. And when you're thinking, you also need to be living your best life. We should not be living life just toiling away. We need to be living life to the fullest and with no regrets, you know, no regrets at all. So as you are living your life and you are trying new things and you are being cognizant and mindful, understand why you're doing these things. Understand what meaning it gives to you. Lusciousness on the 30th. Now, this was a short one. This was, this was a short one. Um, it was short for the authors. It was fairly short for me. Lusciousness is a degree. Go figure out how to make life as luscious. While you're living your best life to the fullest, make sure that it's luscious. So you can go to the podcast to figure out more about lusciousness. And then on our last day, January 31st, interdependence. Now, this is kind of a battle that we, I was having uh, during the, the recording where, you know, we had talked previously in the podcast about autonomy and, you know, what interdependence uh, defined makes me think of is a partnership and what the role of partners plays in a couple specifically dynamic, you know, and again, there are all kinds of different relationship structures, but we're talking, you know, a couple, two people together and what those relationship dynamics mean as a pair. Then as a pair, what does it mean to be autonomous? What does it mean to create and maintain balance? And I do remember what this last bullet that is covered up is uh, covering, but what does to be dependent upon a person mean. So all of those things, all of those things kind of run together and marry to create the bubble around how your relationship will exist. So I am Shanae Jones, your resident certified sex coach. Please go back to the first slide if you want my contact information. I thank you, thank you, thank you so much for listening, watching, and continuing to support me. If there's ever anything, you know how to reach me. It's all there. Thank you so much. Don't forget to like, subscribe, uh, follow, and share, and comment, and all of that stuff. Thank you.